This is a 1965-66 Sylvania. Model is MX61. It's got the little GTE logo. This is actually a repair for somebody who uses it. So it's in service, so we don't need to reform or bring up slowly or anything like that. And they said they were just using it and it right in the middle of a show it just lost sync and I'll show you what lost sync means so this is what lost sync means so you can't really control the vertical or the horizontal um, you can't center them you can't stop them from rolling you can see the horizontals rolling the verticals rolling so the first thing we're going to do, these Sylvania sets are notorious for the pot assemblies that get tin whiskers in them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check that. And I believe I already serviced this one. I took it apart and painted the shell. So yes, I did service this one. So that's probably not the problem. So let's see, where is... Oh crap, we got transistors in this one. Video amp sync separator. Sound. Interesting. This looks like the sync. Oh no, that's a filament. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finger this tube. I'm going to just take it and rock it around and see if it's a issue uh with the tube socket okay moving it around nothing okay let me come over here and adjust the rf power okay that just makes it worse pretty sensitive set pretty Okay, I doubt the tube is bad. It's possible, but tubes usually fade. They don't just die. Let me dig up the schematic on this. Sam's didn't have the exact right set. They had an MX-64, and I think this is an MX-61 that we're working on. So this is pretty close except one thing I notice that's different is this has two transistors um, in the sync separator circuit. Ours has a noise gate and a noise amp. And this just has a noise gate, this schematic. So this is might be a little difficult. But the tube is the same. We should be able to take a look at this signal and see what this... We should be able to see the sync pulses there. What's interesting is they don't give you... They don't give you what the sync pulses coming out of this thing look like. You know, I'm sort of interested in I'm sort of interested in what the sync pulse looks like right here. Huh, interesting. Well, let's get a scope and take a look at take a look at this. We could also measure the DC voltages on this tube. Maybe I'll start with that. We'll check our DC voltages here. It almost seems like as it warms up, it... Just... Boy, that's a weird looking... Is this a filter capacitor issue? Why does it go in steps?
See how it goes and steps? And then it's twerking side to side. Well, what a trippy symptom. Okay, there it's locked in the center. This thing's a weird... I recapped this some years ago, and man, it's got a lot of hours on it. Look at how baked out. And these circuit boards are garbage on these. The traces peel off. These are these are not good circuit boards. These sets work good, but they're okay. So pin three should have 118 volts, uh, two negative 16, and one zero. At least I think that's a zero. Okay, so one should be zero. It is point zero six. Two should be negative 16. It is negative 3, and 3 should be 118. It is 0. What? What's going on there? Now, these schematics are a little bit different, but where's that voltage come from? It comes from a 100K resistor. See, it's blocked right there by a capacitor. I imagine it's blocked here by a capacitor. So what the hell? Another problem with this is these circuit boards are hard, very hard to follow the traces. Okay, I think I found the problem. So this is very tough to see this, but this comes around here, connects to this resistor, then it comes up here to this resistor, then it comes around up here to this resistor. See it loops around right there? Well, right here, we have zero volts. And up here, this crappy looking thing we have 264 volts. So, Looks like we got a broken solder joint right there. Yeah, 270 volts. So that it's going to be high because it's not loaded. So this this is probably our resistor. This is probably our 100k resistor. So the fault the fault is right here. You know that looks like someone had been working. Oh yeah, yeah, it's broken. Freaking trace is broken. No wonder we're not getting any plate voltage to the the horizontal output. I mean, the, try that again. We're not getting any plate voltage to the sink separator. Well, that's okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take and put a jumper from here to here. I'm just going to bypass this broken trace. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Sylvania, these sets have garbage traces. Like, they just peel off. They're like aluminum foil. They just peel right off. All right, so there we go. Our repair has been done. And you can see I used a piece of hookup wire and a piece of Teflon uh, insulation that I took off of an old oxygen sensor wire. I love the Teflon tubing. It makes for really nice repair work. So let's check our voltage. Uh... Let's see, safety last over here. I don't care about that. So, uh, let's see, pin should have what, 118 volts there? Boy, right on the money. And then we should have had what, negative 12 or something here? If I could. Well, we were supposed to. We don't have anything there right now. Oh, we had negative two there before. 117. Wow, so we have a high voltage on the cathode. That should be zero. 
Maybe they want you testing that with a signal. Okay, let me give it a signal here. Okay, with a signal, we now have negative 14, 15 volts here. On the plate, we have 107. On the cathode, we have zero. So those values must have been taken with a signal. So that right there was our fault, that was our repair. All right, as she warms up here, I bet it's gonna work glowing nice and bright yeah that's a weird kind of a weird failure to just happen oh really well the vert the okay let's see here oh yeah rock solid look at that it Circle's a little distorted, isn't it? Still a pretty sensitive receiver. Yeah, we definitely got a little linearity issue there. Strong CRT. Let me try and straighten that out a little bit. Okay, that cleaned up that issue. I just adjusted the height and linearity. This distortion here, this... See this arc to here? And it, it, it it's up here too. It's an arc. That's caused by these little correction magnets. Uh, and I wonder, they're probably missing off this set. Yeah, that one's missing, the one on the top. The one on the bottom is still there. And sometimes there's correction magnets over here too, and those look like they're missing. Just the glue is baked, and they've fallen off. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all the way around. This thing's got more cracked solder joints in it. It kind of does whatever it wants. It's got a weak horizontal output tube, too. You can see it's pulled in here. It's nice over here. It's kind of pushed in here. That's a weak horizontal output tube. Well, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm, I'm tweaking the power here. It's going down, up, down. You can see it, it corrects. The AGC corrects going down. You can see it gets light for a second and then it gets dark again. So uh, I'm happy with this. It, it, there is some flakiness more to that circuit board, but I'm not going to screw with it right now. I'll wait until it becomes a complaint issue because that's that's working nice right there. That looks good. Except all the twerkiness from the bad magnets on the yoke but that's just age if I push on this tube in this area uh, the gain goes up and down the sensitivity I'm gonna try and reflow a bunch of these solder joints on this tube okay I believe I got it it's gonna be hard to see on the camera but it was the plate, that one right there, had a ring all the way around it. Okay, that fixed it. Now it's rock solid. If I, I can go all the way from... Wow, that's going from uh, 500 microvolts to 5 volts. That's 5 volts. 500 microvolts. Well, the AGC just corrects that perfectly, and 
it's rock solid now. It was definitely a cracked solder on that tube. Very nice. Okay, I believe we have a solid fix here. I think we can call this one a wrap for now until the circuit board falls apart again of a 1966 Sylvania portable black and white. A lot of use on this thing and the CRT is still super hot. Okay, here we have a Really, did this come with this little cross on it from the factory? What is it? Oh. Did it pop off? Yeah, it did. Did I just... Was this something someone glued on there, or was that factory? Oh, it's a Christian set. I think this is an MX61E. What the? Ooh, Deluxe. I thought this had that little telephone symbol thing on it. Anyway, let's check the CRT on this one. This one's jumping around too. Check that out. I mean, I'm not at full voltage yet, but. go up to um, let's go up to like five volts it's definitely a not a virgin CRT as you can tell from the dust and the hacked in repairs but it'll definitely produce a usable picture This cross thing really uh, intrigues me. I wonder, does that something that almost looks like it's factory? I have some contact cement at the shop. And I'll glue that on. Yeah, we got good emissions here. Look at uh, 800 microamps at 5 volts. This is a good CRT. Here you go, Chris. I'm going to let you do the honor. Just, uh... It's polarized. Do you pull it to turn on, or is it on? I don't know. It's glowing. Oh, They're glowing. It's rolling, then. Ooh. Yep, some fun for the audio. Their brightness adjusts on the side or what? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, we have arcage. Uh, ooh, we have fire. Is that the flyback? Well, it's the outside of the flyback. What is that? Speakers. That's what it is. Dual, Dual rotating. Where? Where's the cord? You go ahead and plug it in again. Something's drawing too much current. No, nah, it's just the capacitor charge. Oh, weird. I can see it arcing there. Hmm. 
That's weird. It's like it's just carbon tracing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's got too much cigarette paste on it. Well, at least we know it's producing high voltage. Again, I'll look at the screen. No. no picture I can see. Nothing? It almost looks like arcing. Well, no, I scraped it off. Yeah. I know the vertical's running way too slow, that's why it's flickering. There we go. Yeah, you know what, it just needs that. I mean, you can tell by the, the rust right there. I know this camera's not going to show it, but you can tell by there's rust there. The, the, the reason why this was probably EOL'd was the arcing. Okay. You know. Yeah, it's got smoke coming out of it. Eh, we don't need to repair it. Let's just see if we can get you into something new here today. Sure. We got payment plans. Mm -hmm. If you have good credit, maybe we can put you in one of these new consoles. Color set. Ooh. Looks like we discovered something else here that the, uh, what is that, the AC line filter capacitor, the one that's directly across the line, blew up. In fact, you know what? There's a good chunk of that thing missing. The whole outside case is missing, not just the lead being blown out of it. Anyway, this, this TV is totally restorable. You know, maybe just take that out, clean that up real good uh, with a little wire brush and then put some silicone on it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And get all that carbon off there. This is a good set. No problem. Okay, let's get back into this because I really want to see this work. And this was the set that had the arcing problem and I've already started working on it a little bit let me re pause and refer so this was arcing really bad um, and the arcing was due to the accumulation of cigarette juice on this thing this is one filthy chassis so what I did is I scraped all of the uh, cigarette juice off which uh, you know is mostly tar uh, organic plant tar from the cigarette and I'm sure it has a measurable resistance and voltage breakdown point 
And when you get a thick enough coating of it, it starts arcing. Um, so you can see this burnt area here uh, where this lead right here has been arcing. And what this is, is this is the, the lead that comes up from the damper to the flyback. So that's got some huge high voltage pulses on it. And also the right here is the uh, plate cap wire for the horizontal output. I'm going to replace that because it's all corroded. What I did is I scraped all the cigarette crust off of here and cleaned this up real good. And I actually had a hole in the fiberglass backing to the flyback. So what I did is I filled it up with a little silicone one. So I'm pretty much ready to replace this wire here and put my plate cap, uh, new plate cap wire back on and try this cigarette encrusted Sylvania out. Okay, well slipping the chassis back yields a few undesirable capacitors. Of course, these white Elminco uh, deals are like these uh, ceramic safety capacitors and they like to blow up and leak and they're just a capa uh, paper capacitor in a ceramic tube and of course this black beauty um, what do you call that a black beauty or a bumblebee those things are garbage and I've already got this kind of crappy replacement here someone stuck in and oh that's that's nice nice solder job there buddy wow the other side you know these Sylvanias have they have they have really kind of crappy weak traces on the board that just peel right off um, so it's it's really not a good idea to have this huge bulky thing hanging here you know with these weak traces but my main deal was just to replace this wire but it looks like I'm gonna get I don't really want to recap this thing it's got a lot of hours on it look at how it's it's all dark around the tube sockets on the board and look at look at the cigarette juice it's just dripping it almost looks like wax it's so thick okay so I've replaced the damper lead this one with some of this uh, 40 kilovolt anode wire which is the same the same wire that goes to here and I replaced the plate cap lead so let's fire it up and see the cigarette crust burn this thing has a lot of those El Minco look at that one back there it's not even white anymore but it has a, a lot of those and I know all of those need to be changed Here's another one right here. Those things are all leaky. I don't expect this to work right, but you never know. Boy, is this a stupid design. That's an awful lot of heat uh, from that tube on that wire. No wonder why it burned up and arced. Experience is not typical of what inventors can expect. For your free inventors information, call 1-800-224-11. Well, look at this. 1 Speaker's bad. Of course, there's no talking. Go, 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 go. This is running with all the original capacitors, and shortly after I 
we'll look at there the high voltage is coming up. Shortly after I turned it on, one of those white capacitors on the bottom actually exploded and let all the toxic gas and paper out. But this is it working with that capacitor blown up. And it looks, uh, need to turn the, uh, in this great movie, Planet 51, the villainous character General Grohl proposes an intriguing question. Indeed. What a sharp picture. And the high, I know the high voltage is low because the horizontal is not working at, uh, at uh, optimal. And there we have it. An intriguing answer to an intriguing... It's time! It's no wonder the area of energy that's going to come in, but for the most part, we don't expect any rain out of it. But it will, and then yeah, pick up our onshore sea and clear us down a little bit. So, downtown Los Angeles and Orange County Metro, 86 for a daytime high tomorrow, 84 on Monday. Look at this, 80 by the time Wednesday rolls around. Again, we start uh, warming up again by about Thursday. Valley's in the Inland Empire, 95 tomorrow, 88 by Wednesday. And of course, the speaker is the only part in here made in Japan. I wonder if I can. Show that. Oh yeah, there it is, right there. 3.2 ohm, two watt, and it's. Uh, the surprises in college football this season. Teachers have thought the Bruins would start this year. This thing would actually rock if it was completely recapped. This is the original electrolytic in here. All the original capacitors, except that green one. I can see we got a drive line right here because of the bad capacitors in the horizontal. But overall, man, and this thing is so contaminated with cigarette crust. I wonder if it was in a bar or a nightclub or something because, I mean, it is, it is the most, one of the dirtiest sets I think I've ever seen. But my high voltage is working good. I should check the plate current just for the hell of it, just to make sure. Working good, though.